Hello friends. My today's guest is a well-known recognized leader on women empowerment for Africa in the United States and around the world. She is widely recognized for her outstanding contribution and leadership of providing access to health wellness for women and children in rural areas. She is winner of numerous awards and recognitions. She is also president and CEO of Innovative Global Consulting Group. She is founder of African Women's Health Project International. She is executive board member of Fight Cancer Global. It is indeed an honor for us to welcome Her Royal Highness Princess Dr. Moradian Oganlana. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That was beautifully uh, pronounced, actually. So I should ap- applaud you for that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good and uh, good morning from uh, from here in the U.S. and a good evening to you over there in India and to all our friends all around the world, wherever they may be. Ma'am, we welcome you wholeheartedly on our show and thank you so much for joining us. And when I look at your uh, intriguing profile i feel like asking so many questions that i have for you and my first question is related to you being so active on humanitarian front in humanitarian initiatives so ma'am what gravitate towards philanthropy i think the uh, being a royal is one of the uh, criteria that sort of that sort of uh, prepare you for such a outing as this and uh, growing up with my grandmother uh, with actually very strong women on my on my uh, my maternal side my grandmother my mother they were a big influence on my life and i remember my grandmother always saying that whatever it is that you find yourself to do do it for the good of the world for the people so so i had that in the back of my mind so when i came to the united states to uh, for further studies it was one of the things that i knew i wanted to do i knew i knew that my world my my world out there is waiting for me is calling for me and so i just know that i needed to to do it wonderful wonderful as uh, i understand looking at your profile that you are you know performing various roles in your life you are a founder board member of various projects an entrepreneur a publisher how do you juggle so many roles together <laughs> thank you so much uh, that's nothing but just the grace of god uh but uh but one of the things i, I know you know we women you know we are very uh we are very multitasking anyway i mean it's just it's just as women by nature and so i remember you know growing up and you know being surrounded by such powerful women you know you know it, it made me want to go into women empowerment so with women empowerment i knew that there were so many roles that we have to take you know that that want that will come upon us right. uh, uh, as a, as an entrepreneur that that fit right uh, so well into my nonprofit uh, work Uh, right. as well as well as my global uh, citizenship work so to me it didn't really feel like i'm doing a lot of work it's just you know when it's something that the uh, uh, god place upon your heart to do when it's your calling when it's your destiny you know you ju- you just naturally just do it and and there's a saying that you know if you really love uh, doing what you're doing uh, and, you know if you want if you can, if you love what you're doing you won't even yeah. i mean the money don't really matter you know and when you are being fulfilled that is that is the true true excess of success and right. so and that's really what i really attribute to this to and what i really believe this is is because is just because i love what it is that i'm doing because i'm doing the calling that's this on my life for quite active for african women's health project uh would you like to elaborate a little bit more about it yes african women health project international was born out of uh, a scenario i witnessed after my grandmother passed remember mm-hmm. i just mentioned to you that my grandmother was the biggest influence in my life so when she passed away there was a, there was a scenario that i witnessed you know where i actually saw a woman uh, a mother um, a mother with so many children you know with you know battling breast cancer 
Oh. So I took, so that was my first uh, outing with that. And that's the reason why when I came back, this was when I traveled back to Africa. So when I came back to America, uh, I decided to, that I wanted to do something about it that, you know, and, and I knew that if I can see it in one small part of the world, there's is probably in all all, all all the different parts of the world. So that's the reason why we formed the African Women's Health Project International. Right. That you know to go to find a way whereby we can uh, we can uh, bridge the gap uh, you know between the as you know we especially we between the the rich and the poor and we, we uh, between the, the women that are in the city and the women that are in the rural area that don't have necessary access you know easy access to healthcare so that's one of the that's one of uh, our main. Uh, uh, grounding points over there is to make sure that we bring access to healthcare for women and children. Those are our main focus. But of course, as as we know that when we have healthy mothers, we will have healthy families. Yes. When we have a healthy family, we have a healthy nation. Yes. When you have a healthy nation, there's peace, there's right. prosperity. There's so all of it all work hand in hand. And yes. so usually like this. Sometimes, you know, especially uh, maybe with the government or whatever, people don't really realize that all of this is all, we're all in, is all interconnected. Right. And, and, once, and once we relegate, once we abandon one part, one segment of the whole equation, there's not going to be any peace. So right. thereby, so that's the reason why even the work that we're doing, even the work that we're doing and presenting before the UN, it's just, it's just that, that, you know, that this, this, are, this might sound minute and small, but they are very, very important. They are actually a part, an element there that actually contribute to world peace. So, right. so those are some of the, and that's the reason why health is wealth. When they say that, yes. it really means that, you know, because right. health, and, and coronavirus has just shown us that, that, you know, no matter how much money you have, you know, when you are when you are battling a, a disease or when you're battling a, a pandemic, a global pandemic like this, your money don't mean a, a anything. So mm -hmm. that's the reason why we know that, you know, health is well. And so we have to go back to the basic grounding work of making sure that everyone is healthy, most especially the mothers, because they are the ones that carry the biggest burden in right. the home. In, in, in bringing even all these big men that you see out there, who yeah. are the building, but who are the ones that are actually at their base that's building everything together? It's the woman. So, so it's very, very important what we're doing over here. And and I just want to just commend what you are doing too. You know, putting a spotlight on the work that we're doing because we need people. We need you to be able to shed that light so that it can get into all the crooks and corners of the world, so that they will know that. We need to have women healthy. That right. is very important. Right, ma'am. And you're talking about health of mothers. And we cannot uh, avoid this question of reproductive health, reproductive issue, which is, I think, very wide and uh, quite complicated issue to handle, especially in uh, uh, around the African region. Mm -hmm. So, ma'am, uh, have you seen that uh, reproductive health has improved over a period of time in African countries? Actually, what we've seen, uh, there's been a slight improvement, but not, it's not enough. We are, I mean, and, and what, is so, what is so sad about it is that whatever uh, gain that we've, we've had, when this pandemic happened like this, it almost set us back to zero. Yes. So we are, so we were having to regroup and re relaunch things. So and and that is the reason why yeah, reproductive is very very important. Yes. We cannot yes. relegate, and it's not something that you know uh, uh, some men can sit around the table to decide on what happens to the body of a woman or right. what right. And, and vice versa. And and you know, and we need to make sure that we give all the resources and all the uh, the resources to the people that are actually you know. Uh, helping to, you know, to make sure that, you know, they promote that, you know, that reproductive health, you know, is, is very important. And especially to our young girls, you know, start them early so that, you know, they can actually be able to know what it is to expect of their body. So, Ma'am, apart from uh, being a philanthropist, uh, you are an entrepreneur also, and you have your own uh, company with the name Innovative Global Consulting Group. 
uh, would you love to tell a little bit more about uh, that uh, work and uh, what services do you provide? And thank you so much. And you know, you know, the Vetting Global Consulting Group actually came out of the fact that I was helping to uh, bring together uh, uh, like uh, farmers that wanted to have some of their products on the shelves over at Walmart. Okay. So at that time I was in Arkansas, uh, the state of Arkansas, and you know that the headquarters of Walmart is in Arkansas. And so there were some ambassadors, and usually when, uh, when ambassadors and visiting dignitaries come to the state of Arkansas, usually I'm usually involved in it, especially through my work with the Sister City International, the Little Rock Sister City, when I was a commissioner. So when usually when they come, they usually, they, you know, there, was, there will be some kind of uh, talk about trade, trade between uh, Arkansas and, and some of the, the different various countries that come into, into the state of Arkansas. So, a lot, so I was able to actually broker some of the deals and some of it I was just doing it because, as a, because of my nonprofit, African Women's Self Project International, and yeah. because I sit on the Sister City International, which is a global citizen network. So I was just doing it. I, I just saw in, inside that that there was a need. There was a need for, for what it is that I have to, to provide, and that is bringing businesses. Uh, businesses that is in in Afri in America, anywhere in America or all around the world, actually, that wants to have a presence in African countries, yes. I can broker a deal with those ones. Or vice versa, the, uh, companies in in Africa that maybe they want to have a shelf space in some of these major corporations that we have over here in America, then I was able to uh, brokerage that. So I deal with a lot with economic development, business to business development, and I develop business from scratch. So yeah. usually, so usually, if somebody has a concept, I can actually develop it and actually uh, put together a business and and actually start a business for them, as well as nonprofit organizations also too that might they might have a concept but they don't know exactly how to go about it. So mm -hmm. I'm able to actually, you know, they able to bring me on as an as an expert, as a consultant, and I can actually help them uh, broker it together. And I work also too in the oil and gas industry you know, uh, in the logistics, you know, work, you know, people that wants to have some kind of, uh, uh, especially when we start start talking about infrastructure development, especially in African countries, and you, they want to have some of what it is that, you know, that they have over there or vice versa. So I'm able to leverage, leverage some of the relationships that I've built over the years and do that. And that's with the Innovative Global Consulting Group. Oh, great, great. And ma'am, finally, what is your message to the world during these pandemic times? Oh, well, we are going to get through it. That is, that is definitely because, you know, we are, because we are, we are brilliant, we are resilient, and, 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 you know, whatever it is, you know, because even in the midst of turmoil, yeah. they can, they can come out hope. Yeah. And I want people to just make, to just look at, this period that we're in look at it that you know you, you might even be doing uh, a totally different uh, uh projects before or different activities that you you're doing or even businesses that might right. not be working consider this time a reset for you to start again yeah. and and when you start again you can actually start again with in a calmer with a with a precise focus because there's opportunities out there so this is actually a great opportunity for people really even wanting to rebrand themselves, will relaunch themselves, this is it. And that's one of the reasons why I wrote the book, The Achiever's Power. The Achiever's Power is just that, is the is our faith. And that no matter what comes, you will, you know, that you can overcome it and you can always start over again. The first chapter says that, is that, is that, you know, even failure, you know, failure, you know, you, you, you find yourself at a standstill. Yeah. Just take a moment, sit, stand back, take a five second break, yeah. breathe in, and then now launch forward. And that's just it. With anything in life, whatever you find yourself where you get to a crossroad and you have to, instead of just running just straight through and just, or getting panicky or, or you know, tearing out your hair. No, this is not the time. This is the time to calm, take a deep breath, find your, find in within because everything, everything that we do, happiness is not a place that you have to travel to. It's already within you. 
So right. success is the same thing. You already have it inbuilt inside of you. So this is the time to now take an inside look and look at what inside and then mm. bring it out and the mm. world is going to be better for it. Right. Right. Thank you so much for such a wonderful, fabulous message and for having such an insightful conversation with us. Ma'am, we wish you all the best for your all future endeavors and projects. And thank you so much once again for talking to us and taking time for our show. And uh, thank you so much once again for everything. Thank you so much, Rajni. It's a pleasure being on your show. Thank you guys for watching. Take care and see you.